Did you know that the official Homebridge image for a Raspberry Pi has two awesome ad blocker software hidden in the operating system and I'll show you how to enable them. Hello and welcome to my channel which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem and I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now let's get straight to the meat of the video and talk about ad blockers. Now, if you didn't know, it is a software tool designed to block or filter out online ads from being displayed on websites. It essentially helps users to identify, eliminate and reduce unwanted ads or other online elements while browsing the internet. And on my local network, I have been actively using an ad blocker for my family, which has several benefits like protecting children from inappropriate content, minimizing exposure to misleading or harmful ads, and enhancing online privacy and block certain services. Now, if you're using the official Homebridge image that's running on a Raspberry Pi, you can literally enable and install one of the two popular ad blocker softwares, which are AdGuard, and pie hole all on your local network and it's for free now in this video i will show you on how to install adguard and pie hole quickly running through the setup configure your router to use the ad blocker and from there i will show you on how to configure the home bridge plugin now there are lots of youtube videos to help you decide to choose between adguard and pie hole I personally use AdGuard for its clean interface, service blocking capabilities, and it seems to be a lot more family friendly. Either ways, based on your decision, this video will cover both installs and in the description, I've left timestamps for you to scroll through the video. Now for all of this to work, you will definitely need to be using the official Homebridge image installed and running on a Raspberry Pi, maybe a 3B plus, zero, or even a Raspberry Pi 4. And for any other hardware platform, you will need to install these softwares as standalone. Now, this is going to be an extensive video and let's jump straight right into it. Now, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and reserve the IP address that the router has assigned to your Raspberry Pi. This is very important for the ad blocker to run on your network. Now, depending on the router brand and model you have, you'll need to consult the manual to get this done. However, I'm going to be using a Ubiquiti network and the steps are similarly the same. So I'm going to go ahead and open up network. And typically you need to go and look under devices. You'll see that the Raspberry Pi is it. It's always with the Raspberry Pi foundation and you'll see the name Homebridge. So in my case, I've renamed it to a demo server. I'm just going to highlight it. I'm going to settings and I'm just going to click on fixed IP address. So that's the IP address assigned to this Raspberry Pi. And just like that, now I've assigned a IP address that will never change even if it reboots. Once this is completed, we are good to go to install the ad blocker software. So let's go ahead and open up terminal. With terminal open, I'm going to go and SSH into the Raspberry Pi with that assigned fixed IP address. Hit enter and let's put in the password, which is Raspberry and you can change it once you log in. So you can change the password right here, but you can do that later. So from here, all I'm going to do is copy this command here, sudo hp config and paste it, hit enter. Now from here, you can also go ahead and update your node if you wish to, but from here, I'm going to go to number four extra packages, hit enter. And here we're going to be doing the install for AdGuard. So I'll just go ahead, enter. And you want to take note on the port it's going to be running on 3000. I'm going to click hit enter. And from here, it's going to go ahead and install AdGuard. Very quick setup. Now it will provide you the IP address. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to open up a web browser and I'm gonna click on get started. The first change I'm gonna do is update the port to 3000 and I'm gonna leave the next information as is and I'm gonna click on next. I'm gonna give it a default username and password. Click on next and now it also gives you more information to go ahead and how to enable 
the settings. So I'm going to click on next. So I will go and add this information in my router. So which is typically 192.168.0.1 or 86.1.1. In my case, it's 86.1. I'm going to click on next and here's the dashboard. Just like that, you've got AdGuard setup. Very simple. Now from here, what we're going to do is to enable the service. I'm just going to go back to my Ubiquiti network. I'm going to go to settings. I'm going to go to internet. I'm going to select the internet and you need to update this information under DNS server. So I'm going to disable it and I'm going to use the same IP address that we have reserved. So 192.2 and I'm going to click on apply changes. Now, if I go back to AdGuard and refresh my page, you will see that it's already working. So now the AdGuard blocker is already working on my local network. Now I will go to Homebridge. I'll go ahead and install the AdGuard plugin. Now the configuration is very straightforward. The port will be updated to 3000. Username and password that we had created. I'm going to click on save and I'm going to restart the service. Now with the service started, you'll see that in the logs that the AdGuard home is setting to true. If I go to AdGuard, you'll see that the service has been enabled. I can go and disable it. If I go back to Homebridge, you'll see that you'll find the logs as well. So it's setting to false. So this confirms that the AdGuard plugin has been configured. All you have to do now is scan the QR code and you will get the switch enabled in Apple HomeKit. So from here, let's go into the Pi-hole configuration. Now, if you have opted and decided to use Pi-hole over your local network, the setup is the same. Let's access terminal and we'll SSH into the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you do see this error, do not fear. All we have to do is type in open and copy this location, paste, hit enter, and let's go ahead and delete all of the entries that end with dot two. Close the file and let's try SSH again. There you go. Default password is Raspberry. What we're gonna do is go and manage the server. So let's copy this command, paste, hit enter. Let's go down to extra packages. And from here, we're going to go and install Pi-hole. Now, remember, you can only use one ad blocker on your network, not two of them. So you, it's very important to decide if you want to use ad guard or Pi-hole. In this case, I had to swap the SD card to install Pi-hole. So let's go ahead and install Pi-hole. It will provide you the location. Now, when you install Pi-hole on your Raspberry Pi, it automatically uses port 80 that used to be used by Homebridge. So you will need to use this location to open up Homebridge with the port 8581. So you need to take note of that. So from here, what we're going to do is hit yes, and it will go ahead and install the packages. Typically the setup takes between five to seven minutes. Let's hit okay. So it's going to transform device into a network wide ad blocker. Please feel to donate port for ad guard as well as pie hole. Now we did go ahead and enable a static IP address. So if you missed that step, please go ahead and do that right now before you proceed. Click continue, click continue since we already did it. It ends with dot two, click okay, click okay, click yes. Now this is where you'll go and install the web interface. Yes, go ahead and hit yes. And query logging enable, yes. Show everything, which you can tweak later in the web UI, continue. Now once the ad block is installed, you want to pay close attention to the screen that you, that you are seeing it will provide you a default password. So you want to take note of it. The issue here is it will not allow you to copy. So you'll have to go ahead and type it and save it somewhere. So I'll take a note of it. Now from here, hit okay. And then it will show you the link that you can access the Pi Hole web UI. So let's copy this link right here. So we can go ahead and add in the password that was generated just in case if you forget your password and you miss that step, you can copy this and create a new password. So let's go and do that right now. Paste it, hit enter, and you can give a new password. Now for the changes to take place, let's refresh the web page and let's go put in the new password that we just created, login. So now we have the pie hole set up. Let's go now to our router and enable it on our local network. So access, in my case, the Ubiquiti dashboard. I will go to network. The settings are the same across where we will update the DNS server, which is typically nested under internet settings. 
select the provider and under DNS server, I'm going to disable auto and I'm going to put in the IP address that we reserve for that Raspberry Pi. Apply changes. Let's go back to Pi hole. Refresh the page. You'll see that now it's getting queries. Now, since we already have the home bridge port 80 already used, we'll need to go and use the port 8581 to access its interface. Let's click on it. Let's create a default username and password. Let's go to plugins and we'll create look for Pihole. Let's go ahead and install it. Now to configure the Pihole is very straightforward. We all we need is an authentication token to get that value. Let's access Pihole dashboard. Go to settings. Go to API and you want to just click on show API token. Say yes. And all we have to do is copy this text. Go to the plugin paste and the port is 80 localhost since it's running on the same Raspberry Pi and let's click on save restart service. Now once the service is started let's go to accessories you'll see that you'll see a switch for Pi hole and if you scan the QR code you will also see the same switch in Apple home app. Now you'll see that the service is active so we go to dashboard service is active and if I go back to home bridge click on it go back to Pi hole refresh page, you'll see that the service is disabled. Let's enable blocking, go back to accessories, you'll see that it's on. It's that easy. And just like that, you can now enable an ad blocker using the same Raspberry Pi that's running Homebridge and provide that online privacy for your family. I'll see you in the next video. Have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.